on the side of institutional money. So everything that I do, my entire strategy is based on looking for institutional money. I'm pinpointing it, spotting it, and then trading with it, okay? <laughs> That's the philosophy behind what I do. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So it's really been an interesting year in 2020. I feel like I've been very active. It's been a good year. I do day trades. I do options trades. We're going to talk about both today. But overall, whether you use my system for day trades or options, it has an 80% win ratio. So you figure every 10 trades, eight are going to win, two are going to lose, okay? So that's why I size myself, <coughs> excuse me, and I also use stops. So in the day trades, I use stops. I call it a hard stop, but it's a limit order stop. And in options trades, my stop is my risk. I let every trade just completely fully play on out, all right? Thank you, Kathy. Kathy just put some information in the room. <clears throat> so if you're here today, I say open your mind to learn something new. You might take one piece of information away today that will help you or help you decide if you want to get involved with training. You're not going to learn my system here today. You couldn't possibly learn it in one hour. It's a 16-hour it's a class. But you might learn something here that will help you make a decision if you want to learn my system or to help you with your own personal trading, okay? A lot of people are out there trading the market without any help, any mentorship, any system at all, and, and they lose. And so it's not really, uh, you know, I mean, for me, when I hear stories of people, I'm, I'm never surprised because people are all over the place, okay? If you're losing then maybe you need to change what you're doing. You know, <laughs> you don't want to continue to have the same results if the results are losses. For me, I've never veered off what I've, what I've created here, this system, uh, for the last 12 years because it works. People say, well, do this, do that. I don't need to do anything else. Again, if you're, what you're doing is working, don't change it, okay? But if what you're doing isn't working, then you got to change it. If you continue doing the same actions, then you can expect the same results. If you want different results in your trading and your life, then change is required. And not only that, it's necessary. If you want to be more successful in the market and in life, then learn a trading system that will bring about the financial results you've been looking for. And for many people, it's really trading for a living. We're talking about earning six figures, <laughs> but that could be any amount of money, okay? That could be... 400,000, could be 600,000, could be 700,000 a year. Six figures doesn't have to be 100,000, okay? The difference between what you're earning and what you're making has to do with your size, but you can't make any money at all if you don't have a good system. So change what you're doing and the sooner the better if you're losing. I mean, that's the best advice really that I can give you here today. And there. <clears throat> That's, I said you could take away one nugget of information, that was it, okay? And if you have any questions when we go along, just put them in the room. So the cornerstone of success in the market is what? One of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is consistency. Over and over and over, looking for the same thing. Okay, what I do is technical analysis. I do technical analysis in gaps. So I'm looking for that same pattern. Without this, it's hard to stay, stay in the market for any length of time. In order to be consistent, a person needs proper focus on what counts. If you've been dreaming of being successful in the market for years, but the success has eluded you, then stop and consider why. It's time to elevate yourself and your trading to a new level. This requires a deeper understanding, better comprehension, and an overall wider perspective of what makes individual success possible for a trader or investor in the stock market. So making over six figures a year as a trader is not impossible. It doesn't have to take you forever either. <clears throat> you have to know what to do. And again, you have to have a winning system. However, it can be challenging for many people to make this kind of money trading or really any kind of money trading because they lack a good system and a good trading strategy. 
So if you've been thinking about jumping into trading the market, I say, if not now, when? You know, it's halfway through. Can you believe it? I mean, it is almost July 4th. And this weekend is July 4th weekend. Half of 2020 is gone. And that's crazy when you consider the fact that most of us have been quarantined for, you know, better part of that period of the year for the first six months of the year. But before you know it, it's going to be the holidays. God help New York. I hope New York is back to normal by the holidays. Please. But, you know, 2021 is right around the corner. So if you're not where you want to be so far this year, you have time to change it. But time keeps ticking and it keeps moving forward. And, you know, we, we very often put off goals and things we want to do. Like it could be something as simple as a diet or an exercise program or cleaning out your closet. Or, or your garage, just things that we, projects, things we want to do. We said, well, we're going to do this later when I have time. You got to make time for stuff. That's, that's the only way things get done. So let's talk about institutional money. What do I mean by institutional money? I mean <clears throat> big money, hedge funds, big banks. That's the kind of money, big, large, large money in the market, big funds, huge, big traders that trade big positions. Becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required. What does this mean? It means meeting price action in charts. Okay. So comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. When they step in, you can see them. Now, you may not know what that looks like. And I'll pull up the market if we have time at the end just to look at the market charts because I saw we rallied into the close today. And we can talk about it. <clears throat> but this has been a tricky market for some of the periods this year. So, you know, back and forth for the last two weeks, we've been in a range. Now you say, well, what does institutional money look like? Well, this was a trade we did. I'm going to show you the chart in BA in a minute. But how's what's one way you can play it? This was a gap down in Boeing <coughs> that I called last week, Tuesday, the June 23rd. I called the 185 puts that expired right that Friday. This was a really nice trade. Cost of the trade was $480, sold at $1320, profit was $15,120 with an $8640 risk. Now, you could have taken one contract for and risked $480, and you still could have made money. You could have made a 175% return on your investment. So you figure you can trade with a small size, a beginner size, a medium size, a large size. It really is up to your experience and how much money you have in your account to risk, okay? Now, actually, let me flip back to the Boeing chart right now, if you can hang on, I'll pull that up. Can everybody see the chart? So I called the Boeings here on the 23rd, boom, boom, boom. So this was a beautiful sell-off, and you can see I called the 185 puts, and it dropped into it. Really nice move. Does everybody see the Boeing chart? This is a daily chart. Hello, can everybody hear me? Because last week we lost sound. Speak or forever hold your peace. Okay, I'm gonna point this out another day here. I don't have this trade in here. I don't think I do, but this was a couple weeks ago. This, okay, was a beautiful sell-off on Boeing on 611, actually ever since here. Let's go back. This sold off here, here, and here. Okay, this was the first week of June. So what do I do? I look for institutional money in the gap. So I look for the gap. I look for bullish gaps. I look for bearish gaps, okay? And then I look for where institutional money is buying or selling the gap because that's how you get a big move and that's how you can make this kind of money in this trade here. Now let me know if you can, we go back to the slide here if you can see the PowerPoint. Can you see it? 
And you say, well, how can you make $15,000 in one trade? Or how can you make $1,000 in five minutes? Or how is this possible? I've been doing this for years, years and years and years. I started trading in 2008 and I had a high level of commitment, of personal commitment, financial commitment to myself to teach myself something that would work. It took me three years to figure out this strategy that I now teach you. You have the luxury of coming to me and learning it in a weekend but, and, and, and getting my trade calls. But for me, it was a huge commitment, three years of my life and a lot of money trading the market to figure out what I know now. You can just pay me one fee for it and learn it in a weekend. Lucky you, okay? You don't have to spend three years of your life. But there is a commitment level for you even now because my class costs $7,000. And you also have to get it. You have to understand it. You have to be engaged. You have to get up in the morning and take the trades. I see Eric in here. You have to be responsible for your risk. You have to do the right things. If I say, you know, here's the Boeing puts or Boeing is a short or whatever, you don't do something crazy. No piggy targets, things like that. You have to make the personal commitment for yourself. But let me tell you, it's way easier for you than it was for me back 12 years ago. Eric wrote it there too, no piggies. That's right. And right now, particularly in this market, I know everyone thinks, oh, do, 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 do. We're in an uptrend, everything's fine. No, the market, is going to continue to be volatile. It's going to continue to be tricky. Do not think the trickiness has gone away, even with the rallying to the close today, because it has not, okay? So not having piggy targets is a good idea, because when the market is volatile, you have to take the profits when they come, okay? So commitment is on your part, and then when you're looking to trade, you're looking for the commitment in the stock or the market, whatever it, hap it happens to be that you're happening to trade. You're looking for commitment. Commitment meaning a lot of money, a lot of money that would come in and buy a stock, or a lot of money that would come in and dump a stock and sell it, okay? So all of these institutions I'm talking about, big banks, everything, they have a plan of action why they're buying stocks or why they're selling stocks. It have absolutely nothing to do with us, okay? There's research reports they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for. They analyze the earnings. They do all kinds of things. We don't even have the time or access to this information, okay? What I look at is the chart. I look at the daily chart, and I rate the gap in the daily chart using a 26-point rating system that I created over that three-year period that I just told you. And during that period, in the morning when I get up, I'm looking at many different stocks. Could be longs, could be shorts, but I prefer to short. And I'm trying to determine which ones are the good ones. What stock is going to go today if I want to play one thing or maybe I want to play more than one thing, okay? Typically I'm looking to do one trade a day, maybe two, but most of them I'm doing one, okay? But institutional money for me at this point, because I've been doing this for so long, is very easy to read, but it's hard for some people. If you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, like in the Boeing trade I just showed you, you can take the position in the right direction and then get out after the move happens for profit. And that's how you're gonna make money. If it's after the fact, it's too late. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power and you need to know how to find it. It is very important to find it because this power has the ability to pay you. And guess what, that's fabulous, that's good news. The market has the ability to pay you. It truly, truly does. Some people are doing extremely well with me this year. They've made more money this year than they've ever made, ever trading, ever. And really, part of it is uh, I've had a lot of trade calls this year, like I said, and also I've been very, very focused and I've had I've just been on point with my calls. But you know, if you think that. There's not going to be any more volatility between now and the end of the year. You're wrong. There is. But that makes for good trading if you know how to trade it. It makes for great trading, quite frankly, because some of these trades that, that I call, at least for the options, sometimes I call a trade and then we're down before it goes. And then we go to bed and we get up in the morning and then guess what? Poof, we're up. And that can happen. And that's called follow through. It's follow through with what? With the institutional money. It's the buying and the selling that's coming into stocks in the market. 
Knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. You can win big trading on this side of the power. And quite frankly, I think it's the only way to trade. It's the only way that makes it even fun to trade. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it isn't, trust me, it is. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. That's good. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even when you think it isn't, it is, okay? Now this is a chart of Apple, it's a daily chart. This looks good here in the slide actually, it's pretty big. Um, so I called a beautiful, beautiful call in this. Uh, here was the rally. This was last week. Okay, Apple rallied. Then it gapped up. Actually, let me show you the trade first. I called the 360 calls in Apple. I called them early, June 17th. So let's go back. June 17th was here. See that bar? So I called the, I could see there that this was going to go up, get bought the day I called it. But as you can see, actually, it was down. Now, these were calls. So when you're doing an option, it's calls, it's like you're going long. So the trade was down before it went poof and went up. Actually, that was just what I explained to you. So sometimes I can see things ahead of time, but that's, that's good, okay? Anyways, here was the lift. Stock gapped up over 360, above 360. I forget the open that day. It was like 362 and change. Rallied had a huge move, well over 370 was a beautiful call. So we did it here, and then you could have got out of it here. And actually, you could have got out of it the day before with profit too, if you wanted to. So the cost of this was 490, similar to the Boeing. 18 contracts was risk of 88.20, sold at 13. Prof was 14,580, return on investment 165%. Typically, what are your expectations for profits and trains? Okay. You take an amount, you determine that based on the size of your account. If it's 500, if it's 1,000, whatever, you're looking to turn it over one. So if you risk $500, you're looking to make what? $500. If you risk $1,000, you're looking to make what? $1,000. If you risk $8,000, you're looking to make $8,000. Now some trades will be more. This trade happened to be more than 100% return investment. Why? So this did exactly what I was saying earlier too. It gapped up overnight. So boom, it was just up a lot as soon as it got up in the morning. And that is one of the beautiful, really fun things about trading options. What I like about day trades, which again is the same system that I do, but they're faster trades. We're in and out in a couple of minutes in the day. What I like about that is that uh, I know how much money I have and what I did by four o'clock by the time I go to bed every day. And also it's quick money, it's fast money, it's seconds or minutes. Whereas with options, sometimes you have to wait a couple of days like you see here. Okay. Any questions here so far? Okay, let me know. Anyways, becoming an expert. In order to become successful in the market, you have to become a specialist. A specialist in one specific strategy. A strategy that reads institutional money, or what I call power money in the market. This brings momentum and opportunity, which of course we love. Every trader on every level must learn this skill set. It can be acquired with education, and that's the reason you would come to me. Okay, You would come to me to learn a skill set that would help you predict where institutions are buying or selling, because that's something that I'm good at doing, okay? So if you're here, you have to say, well, what am I trying to learn? Or do I need to learn something different because what I've been doing hasn't worked? And, and even though, and this is the tricky part about the market, and I see this now with the rally today into the close, people, people are gonna, this, people are gonna, between now and the end of the summer, let's say, let's say now the end of the summer, Labor Day is September 7th, People are going to struggle that are day traders, I can tell, because the market is going to continue to be volatile and choppy, and people are going to think that it's not, but it is. If we have time at the end, I'll explain why. But anyways, what I do is a strategy that sets up daily in the market. What is this strategy, and how does it work? 
The number one strategy I use to trade, whether I do anything, anything at all, options, day trades, anything, is called golden gaps. So what is a golden gap? A golden gap is a gap that happens that is a high level of chance of working, high odds. I look at a gap and I rate it on a system using 26 points. If it rates 20 points or more, I take it in the direction of the gap. If it rates under 20, I don't do it. If it's a 17, 18, 19, then it's 50, 50 chance of working or failing and I don't do it. And as far as the, um, you know, when you're looking at something and you're taking risk, okay? When I look at a trade, I don't feel like a 50-50. I feel like 100% conviction it's gonna work. Does that mean that every trade works? No, but that's how I feel when I take it, okay? Many people instead are back and forth not sure what to do and sometimes take the opposite direction in the same stock. I never do that. So I go into something believing wholeheartedly that it will work and the system helps me with that, which is based on the confidence and having the conviction. Now, Eric has a question here. I notice you hold your option trades almost a week. I'm, we're not holding every one a week. We're waiting till they go. We're waiting till they go. Um, go back to this one. It, it really, it didn't go till it went. This didn't go anywhere. So like, what would you, like this was down, I'm telling you. So I didn't plan on holding this a week. It, it hadn't gone yet. So remember I said earlier, as far as stops, I don't use a stop. The stop is the, the I mean, I, uh, the stop is the risk. So like, there's no decision to be made here. You put the trade on, you let it play out. It either wins or loses, you follow me? I would, I would have preferred it to go immediately, here or here, but it didn't. Sometimes they do though, okay, sometimes they do. Now, let me go back and show you this Amazon. I called calls on Amazon. It was the exact same day that I called uh, the whatchamacallit, the April. It was June 17th. Now, this one was pricing. Two contracts were $9,000, so one contract was 45 bucks. But this was this actually went through that number. The next day continued, I'll show you that in a minute. It was almost a 100 point move. This stock can move like that. This is a nice way, options are a nice way to trade very expensive stocks like Amazon and Apple. It was a 220% return investment. So let's go back to June 17th. That was that same day for the Apple. It was here. Again, Eric, are you seeing this here? It didn't really get moving until here. So again, wasn't planning on holding it for a week, but it didn't get going. It wasn't up enough or wasn't really up. Anyways, it continued. This was the exit day, but then it continued here, which was crazy. It actually got to the dream target, which was 2,800. It continued, it gapped up this day, and then, then you had to get out of it. And that was only through the 26 anyway, so you would have wanted to get out of it. And then the move was done. And again, you don't have to think hard when you're up your goal. If your goal is 100%, you're up 200%, what are you thinking about? You know, That's what I mean by no piggy targets. But when you're looking at stuff, you're looking at things based on the odds. High odds, this is gonna work, and it did. High odds. High odds, I'm looking at high odds. You gotta, so that's what the system does. It says, well, there's, this is really high odds it's gonna go in this direction. Okay, let's do the trade. Do you know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you ignore your sizing. You still have to size yourself. You can't be irresponsible, but you look at it and say, this has really high odds of continuing higher and getting bought, and therefore, based on the gap rating, I'm going to do it. Because it gapped up, Eric. What do you mean? It went through the strike. It went aggressively through the strike. And remember, it expires the 26th. This was the 23rd. So like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the 23rd. Like, you can't hold it to the last day when you're up so much. It was aggressively through the strike more than 10 points. It was expired that Friday. This was the Tuesday. And it was up a lot. Does that answer your question? Does the course teach you the gap system to place the trades? Yes. You learn the 26 point, point system in the class. Yes. How I'm picking, how I'm making the picks. How I'm picking, picking all these. Okay. I don't think you would have had a problem getting out of that trade, Eric, knowing you. 
I don't think you would have had a problem getting out of it. Now, sometimes Eric's traded with me. Sometimes you've held things too long with piggy targets, but I think you've you've learned enough not to do that. You know, you're coming into the you're coming into the week here this week. Say it's this week. Now, I called very few things out for for the July second because the market's closed Friday. I think there was like very few things, but they they went last week. But like if you had held any trades that I called last week that were positive into this week with a short week, well, that was kind of silly. Trades that were up, I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that just you have to use a little bit of common sense with it. Just because you have a week at late, you know, left to go doesn't mean you hold the trade. What you could do is if you feel like it's going to continue, you could take half out. You could book half the profit and take the rest if you really want to. There's an idea for you. Anyways, here was the Boeing chart. We already talked about this. It was a nice, nice chart. June 10th, I called Boeing 200 puts. This was after the open around 10, 10 a.m. Cost was 925. These were kind of expensive because I called them out for the following week, okay? Sold at 36, profit 24,075 on an 83.25 investment, return on investment 289%, which is huge. So let's take a look at the June 10th, the day I called it, was here. And why did this work so big? Easy. It fell and then gapped down the next day, fell off a planet. So, I, I'm sorry here, I didn't clip the other side of this. Here, actually, let me go to the charts because you can't see the price where this was. Let me get up the chart here for this. So this day here, then you see here where this opened. So this opened 20 points through the strike on 79.35 and change. I mean, you, you, it's not a difficult decision to get out that day. It's 20 points for the strike. But that was not cheap because I really called it out. I, I actually, I mean, I could have called this out for that week, which is crazy, but I, you know, I safely called it out to the 19th. No, do I ever sell a portion of the contract and let the rest ride? No, but that's me, my personal, personal preference. That's not, that has nothing to do with anything. Once I'm done with something, I'm done with it. I just move off of it mentally, get, wait for the next trade, do the next trade. That's not a rule that has nothing to do with anything. You can do whatever you want with that. I'm giving you suggestions. Like I said, you certainly could do that. You could do two contracts with something, get out of it, hold the rest, yes. Me, like once I'm mentally engaged in it and then I'm out of it, I wanna be done with it. So that's just me. I wanna move on to the next trade. I also called the 220s, but this was the day before. So sometimes I'll also call strikes in, in a, in a and I'll call them like in a row. Eric knows this too from doing them. So I called the 220s on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday I called the 200s. If I see it's gonna run into a certain number, I'll call several strikes. Again, this wasn't cheap, but it was really good. Cost was 14. And again, I called this out to the 19th that I didn't even have to. It went on the 11th. Six contracts cost 8,400, sold at 40, profit 15,600, 186% return on investment. So if you had risk, say, if you did one, and you spent fourteen hundred dollars for one contract. You could have made four four grand. I mean, you could have sold it for four grand, and you would have made twenty six hundred. Okay, so that's a nice trade. Your risk fourteen hundred, you make twenty six hundred dollars. That's a nice trade. So you know, this is taking it Tuesday, and you would have exited it Thursday. Sometimes they do go that quick, and in this case here, going back to the Tuesday on the chart, it was up. It was up right away. So this was up. So you you were up and it looked really good. And it, and it was really good. Because um, again, that came down and dropped through in the 177 area. Now let's talk about day trades. This was a day trade. This was a long stock close here, gapped up, rallied. This was a bullish gap. So this got bought at least for the day. We did a trade in it, we went long. Entry was 2870, stop was 2810, 6,000 shares, a risk of 3,600. We added a 29 with a confirmation, 12,000 shares, average price was 2885, exit was 2975. This went a dollar through that exit, which is crazy, but it did. 
went well over 30. I think 30.77 or something was the high. So again, no piggy targets, but it did keep going. You could bar by bar it and move your stops if you want. I don't do that either, but you could. Okay. Again, I prefer to be out of a trade once I'm out of it and move off to something else. But the profit in this was 10,800. This is a day trade. So this is just on that particular day. Now, what's the pros and cons of day trades versus options? Day trades, you need margin at a broker and options, you do not. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. I wouldn't risk $2,000 in one trade if that's all you have though. When you have a margin account at a, at a retail broker or a prop broker, you need to look at the cost of the stock for how many shares you're going to take. We trade stocks that could be anywhere from $5 a share up to you know, $350 a share. But the day trades move quick and fast. Here was another one in Boeing. This was a short on that day that it fell all the way through. This was, I clipped this early in the day before it fell. This was the day it had that big red bar. We shorted it as a day trade. Entry was 186.20, stop 190.75, shares was 800, risk 36.40, exit 167.40, profit 15,000 in one day. This was a day trade, okay? So again, this isn't really a lot of size. It's because the stop was big, quite frankly, but the move that it had, let me go back to the day of that. We caught it up here in the tail. So it was just a, with 800 shares, getting this sell off, it was a huge day because we caught it in the tail before it sold off. That was a day trade. So it depends on what you like. You don't have to babysit options looking at your charts every second. You do have to watch day trades. And if you want a day trade, you have to be in the trading room with me between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. The options trades, you need to watch what's happening in the morning when you get up or at lunch or before the close, but you don't have to sit on top of your computer and babysit them. So there's pros and cons to both. It depends what you really have time to do and what you want to do. Okay. Any questions here so far? So I do one system. All these trains are the same system. I'm using the same system to make the picks. I'm doing Boeing because of the rating system. I'm doing WW because of the rating system. It's one system that focuses on quality. So why is institutional money the way to go? Because you get big moves, which is great if you're a trader, no matter how you're taking the trades, you get big moves and it's power and money like a lion. It's in control. And even if you think it's not in control, it is. So if you go against power money in the market, you're going to lose guaranteed. Okay. So you can't forget that you need to know what you're up against. You need to know who's in charge in the market. And it is institutional money. It isn't retail traders. Some days it feels like it. Some days it feels like it, it is, but, but that's the point where I'm saying here, like, like, like the lion that's hunting, you, they're there. You may not know that they're there, but they're there. Do you know what I'm saying? Any questions here so far? Okay. So how are you going to find and pick which gaps to trade? Well, I use a rating system to find the gap. Now, what is a gap? This is a very basic definition, but I'll just go over this here quickly. What is a gap? A stock gap when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So I created a system called Golden Gap. So they just have huge opportunity because they spot this power money. And again, have big moves, which you want to have, like the Boeing, like the Apple, like the Amazon. How do I find them? You can look at them post-market. You can look at them pre-market. Right now, you could pull up if you have your charts up, Mew. Mew is gapping up. Mew is a bullish gap. I will wait to rate Mew till tomorrow morning. We may trade Mew tomorrow. I don't know because it's too early. It's five o'clock at night. But I find them and then I rate them and apply my system to it to determine if I'm going to short it or if I'm going to go long it, okay? So I find gaps and then I rate them using a checklist. Gaps have to be qualified. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. And that helps you, helps you make money. Gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook. And yet they hold a lot of significance. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they are a definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. If you follow the gap, you will be following the power of money. And that's how you're gonna do well because it, you don't have to even take this extreme amount of size 
or risk if the money is moving the stock in a big, big way. Again, something is moves at two, three, four, five dollars or fifty dollars, you know, like a move like Boeing overnight. You don't even have to take an extreme amount of size. One contract pay you. Look at that Amazon. One contract would have paid you 99 points. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't need a ton of contracts, but you can make more money with more contracts. And that's the exciting thing about the future when you think about if you can get good at this and learn it and do it. And that's what some people are doing. So I look for institutional money and gaps. There's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock money. Not a lot of little money, but a lot of money. Or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved with the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. The amazing thing is that as negative as traders and analysts talk about the power money people, they're the reason that one individual can be successful in the market. I look at it as a positive thing, not as, some, not as something that screws you. Say, oh, they did it, they did it again, they rally it up and only to sell it off. No, you weren't looking at the right thing in the first place if you did something like that. You were in the wrong direction to begin with. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. Okay. So for me, I use a checklist. It's a 26 point checklist. This is what you'd learn in the class. Al, you were asking what you'd learn in the class. This is it. This is the Saturday of the class. You learn all the points. It's the whole day. Then the Sunday of the class, you learn the entries and targets. Okay, I have six different entries. And you would learn that on the Sunday of the Golden Gap course. But the meat and potatoes is the strategy. But you need to know the entries because that's how you're gonna take the trades to make money. And the targets so you know how to get out. Any questions here so far? The key to profits though is really power money. And it is exciting when you make money from the market. But everything I do, I just had the June class this past weekend. The July class is not till July 18th and 19th. It, it's good for me to, to teach the class like I do because it really reinforces how good this stuff is I figured out. It's really just a lot of common sense. I mean, I, the people this weekend really learned so much and they got it. I mean, it's like it totally makes sense because I'm really good at explaining it. I'm a good teacher. But I mean, a lot of what I do, it makes just sense. It's just you don't know what to look for unless you come and do the class and learn. But it's like when once you learn it, it's like, oh, my God, I totally get it now. This totally makes sense. And then trading isn't hard anymore. You know, and then the only thing that you have to deal with is managing your trades as far as your risk per trade and making sure you get out. I mean, if you're up in a trade and you're up 100 percent or more and you don't get out, well, that's just silliness. And again, that's not using common sense either, you know, and those are those are things that you can fix. This was a nice couple nice testimonials here. I've just been on a roll with the trades. That was a nice email from Greg or Craig. And um, Jackie's been doing great. This was last week, I think it was, or it was a week, two weeks ago. We did AEL, we did Boeing, we did the SPY, we did Diamonds. And I called a bunch of puts last week. They all dropped on Friday. They all fell on Friday when the market fell. So focus on the right information. The most valuable information for people to trade can be found in reading price action and gaps. Understanding chart reading of gaps and how important the patterns of price are in the market will assist you in being profitable. Reading power money when it sets up will help give you conviction to trade. Seeing when and where the power money positions are getting in is like finding a gold mine. And that's why I call it the golden gap. Seeing gaps clearly and how they are creating trends, changing trends and making momentum is a powerful way to trade. So powerful that you'll, you'll never look back. You can use this information to enter trades yourself so you can get paid along with the power money moves. So it's really easy once you know what to look for to press the button. All of your fears, your anxiety, everything, all the losses you've had for the last number of years if you've been trading, you'll get over that once you say, wait a minute, this makes sense. 
then you start to do it, then you start to make money, and then you realize that all the dreams you ever had of doing this are possible until you really get consistent with something. I'm not talking about just making money one day or one week. I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm talking about just like, just like the email from Craig where like I'm calling 20 trades in a row and every trade is working. And Eric, you know that from, Eric used to be on the options letter. Eric knows, so you know. Then you, then all of a sudden you you realize it and you say, oh my gosh, this is like this can really happen for me. And then and then you're then you then you talk about the commitment. Then you have the the financial commitment and the emotional commitment, and then you feel motivated and you feel happy, and then you feel joy about getting up in the morning and you're excited to trade, and and that excitement it never really goes away if you love what you do. So I don't know where the market's gonna to be tomorrow, and I don't know where we're gonna trade, but it's exciting to get up tomorrow morning, and then you see what it is. So every day is new and fresh and exciting because you never know what the day is gonna bring. And with an optimistic attitude, with a good system, you can create what you want, which is profits, not losses, okay? And you really need conviction to make money. So important. And the nice thing also is that you can trade for a living from home, you can do it from home, and that's great too. So the system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and system that is profitable. Golden gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they focus on large momentum to trade. What stocks should you trade? Stocks at gap and rate 20 points or more per the golden gap 26 point rating system. Trade the gap in the direction of the gap. When do you trade them? Early in the morning in the open when they set up and trigger. You must have a structure in place in order to make any money at all consistently. It is about the consistency that many traders lack in their systems, and this is really, really where I'm good at it. I do the same thing over and over every day. I get up in the morning, I rate my gaps. I don't do anything if there isn't any good gaps. If there's a gaps that rate 20 points or more, I do them. They could be longs, they could be shorts. I never skip a beat. I always rate the gap. I never fudge it. Um, I, I mean, I'm just like a, like a machine, you know, every morning and I never question it. Okay. But I've been doing it a long time, but my level of confidence is so high and I know it so well that I can do that, but that should be your goal. Okay. That should be your goal too. You get really, really good at something. The problem is a lot of people don't get good at anything and so they never make any money. You know, it's like, if you want to be a, a golfer, not a professional golfer, but just a, you know, a good golfer. You gotta play a lot. You gotta be consistent, you gotta practice. So, and you gotta practice something that works, not just practice trading for the sake of trading and risking money. You have to practice a system that works, okay? So my system is a called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point checklist. It measures gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, ideally. Two, a big move on the day. Three, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10. Precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward target potential. Okay, so the, if you wanna do this, your plan of action should be trade only, take the class and then trade only golden gaps that rate according to the 26 point rating system. So you have a high rate of success in your directional bias. You can do them as options or day trades. You can get all my trades, you can join the room of the letter. Then two, get the best entry you can with precision early in the morning to get good risk to reward trades. Take them when I call them, okay? Or do them in the morning on your own. Your goal is always one, but sometimes you can make 100%, 200%, 300%, okay? And then three, create a money management plan for yourself to achieve your goal of becoming a professional trader and achieving your goal of working for yourself. So like I said, you got six more months left in 2020. If you're not where you want to be now with your trading or you haven't started, you still have plenty of time to achieve your goals. So you learn it and build your account up and start making money and get in a groove with doing it and the consistency that I've been discussing that by January 2021, you are making the money that you want to make. You can, you, you actually can do it and you actually can do it for a living if this is what you want to do. I know some people like their jobs and they want to work on the side and, and that's fine, but you can do it for a living if you want to. And in these times with COVID-19, it's been very convenient, I must tell you, to trade and work from home. So glad I know how to do this way before this year. But you gotta think about the practicality of it, and you have to be professional about it, and you have to go about your trading like 
you know, one, that you're serious about it, but two, with an attitude that you're going to be successful, not, not having this attitude that you're going to fail. You want to do well. Doing well is, 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 is your goal, okay? Don't forget that. So make 2020 the best year yet. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself to get things done. So the next class is in about a month. It's July 18th and 19th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99 U.S. dollars. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you want to sign up. Um, the trends course is tomorrow. I don't know if anyone will be interested in this. You'd have to sign up by, you know, tonight or tomorrow morning before the class by 10 a.m. This is a half-day course on long-term trends, and the benefit is it does include one month free in the Stock Swish trading room, which is really nice. So you get one month in the room, and then the trends class, but you, this is tomorrow. Do news have a bearing in the stocks that show a gap? Anything can have a bearing. It could be Trump tweeting. It could be news. It could be earnings. It could be a CEO gets fired. It could be COVID. It could be a million different things. Um, any questions here at all? We're almost, time is almost up. Let me just show you a live gap while we're here. which is the Mew. Can everybody see? So this is a gap that's happening right now live. This big green bar, here, let me blow this up. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. this big green bar here is the gap happening live in Mew. Mew had earnings tonight, that's what it was. At one point it was up here, it looks like high up here, 415 was around 52.85. I don't know where this opens tomorrow. Again, I'm not gonna rate it tonight. I'll wait till tomorrow, but this is a bullish gap right now. So I don't know if this, is it going to be a short tomorrow or a long? Actually, let me just see, where did I say it was? 51.37. So here's around where the mu is right now. So this is a live gap. See it? So you see that it moved higher from where it closed, okay? You see that, the question is, is it gonna move higher tomorrow? Because you won't make money going long tomorrow as a day trade unless it moves and continues higher. Do you see? Now let's look at the market. That's what the market's doing after hours. Market had a rally into the close. Now it's up about 40 cents and change. Be interesting to see where we end up tomorrow. Any questions from anyone about anything here so far? How's everyone doing? Is everyone ready for a nice holiday weekend coming up? Listen, be careful out there if you are trading. Oh, I do have some questions, hold on. Uh, Friday we did Nike. Yesterday, I mean, today we didn't do anything. Al, I will send you the sign-up forms if you want to sign up. I'm going to do some kind of July 4th special, but I don't know what it is yet, but I'll send you that. How much money do you need to start trading gaps? If you want to trade options, you can open up an options at any broker that has an options account for $2,000. That would be then only to do options, okay? That would be the minimum. It's the minimum to open the account at anywhere, any any broker. If you want to day trade, okay, 
Like we did the Nike as a day trade. We did not do a Nike option, which is funny because when I look back, I was like, oh my God, this one, to talk about piggy targets. I didn't be a piggy in Nike and I could have been a piggy and I wasn't a piggy because it was a Friday, but Nike went to the dream target. It was 94, it broke it actually. Anyways, um, if you wanted to day trade something like Nike as a day trade, not an option, I'll show you this here, then uh, you would need a minimum at a retail place, like say Ameritrade of 25,000 and at a proprietary day trading firm, a minimum of 2,500. At a prop firm, you will get 10 to one margin at most prop firms. At a retail firm, you will get four to one margin. What's the difference? Retail brokerage firms are SIPC insured. SIPC insured is not FDIC insured. You gotta Google it and read the difference. Proprietary day trading firms are not SIPC insured. You get higher leverage. Okay. If you want a referral for either one, email me and I can refer you and you can ask the broker's question specifically because I'm not a broker. Anyways, this was a beautiful short in Nike. We were in this early and we got the drop in here and called it a day, but look at what this did. Talk about momentum. Actually, let me just pull up the daily here. Talk about momentum. Talk about piggy targets. I did tell people in the room Friday though, listen, I still think this continues if you want to stay with it. I don't know if anybody did. I didn't take a survey today. But I usually like to be out of my day trades pretty quick in the morning. But Friday, because the market continued lower and the market fell, this fell with it. And this rallied back today with the market too. This was a gap on earnings. And we got it. No option in this though. And if, if I had called an option, I mean, Eric, would you have had a problem getting out of that? No, you wouldn't have. You would have got out of that for sure on Friday, wouldn't you have? You would have been up a lot. I probably would have called the 98s. Probably would have called the 98 puts. You would have got out of it. So it, there, there is times that you will get a move like that on the day I call it. You know, the Apple and the Amazon took a couple days. Boeing went pretty quick. This went immediately. So there, there are times when they do go immediately, yeah. Listen, have a wonderful night, everybody. Owl sending the forms to sign up for the class. JD, I don't know if you have any other questions. You seem interested. I've seen you at a couple webinars. Some of you people are new. I've never seen you before. Barry, I think I've seen you before. A few of any questions. Um, Frank, I see you in here. How are you doing? Frank is on the options letter. Frank is super duper new. Frank, do you have any questions while you're here? Frank is like a baby. That's how new Frank is. Frank was just born. <laughs> Frank, are you there? Awesome webinar, thank you. Kathy, Frank may not know how to type in the thing. <laughs> Listen, have a great night, everybody. And I will see you soon. If you're interested in anything, email me. Very good. Have a good night.